No fish Nick here. It is Monday, February 24th. I'm up in Door County, Wisconsin, uh, going to go out for whitefish. I, uh, I, I've been out here a couple times now this year. Um, I haven't made videos on every trip, but I do have a lot of good footage. One uh, February 3rd, I was fishing um, a little south of here and some really good underwater footage on the Aquaview. Uh, I'm going to show some of that. I brought the underwater camera again, and hopefully we can uh, see some cool footage. Hey, I got a, I got a shout out. I want to give a little shout out to our uh, Nick Chicago viewers, Ovi. It was nice meeting you out here last week, and uh, good thing you recognize me. And I hope some of the tips that you learned from me last week that you catch more fish next time you come up here. So that's Ovi from Chicago. Ovi from Chicago. Yeah. Uh, all right. Cool. Been a heck of a day. Glad Troy invited me to come along on his adventure. And we got some nice fish, got some nice footage. Beautiful day. There's a couple things that you really need to remember if you're gonna come out for white fish, and that is rags, you know, like white or any kind of rags, because these fish, these fish are really slimy. Um, and then again bags rags and bags You need you need some bags to put those Put those slimy buggers in there, you know, they are real slimy and stinky So you don't want to get it all over your shack and all over your gear. So bring some bags and rags and uh, Remember to bleed bleed out the fish and try not to uh, let them get frozen or you, you you'll reduce the quality of the fish so um, but anyway, um, that's the tip of the day. Bring bags and rags. Here's my setup. The hummingbird up up on top. And we'll be uh, using the, the mapping. and shut off the sonar for now. Because we're just going to use the mapping. And I keep my, my uh, mud mixer um, on back. I use added straps because it will pop out of these clamps. So I got it strapped in really well. Um, and then I used the, the bar to uh, tow it out. The tires are studded, so as long as I can get to the ice, I have traction. But if the snow gets too deep, that's where I get myself in trouble. Good thing is this thing's pretty light. I can get myself out of trouble pretty quick. Got the cover on the sled, keep everything nice and tidy. I'm gonna be wearing a helmet, keep the, the wind out of my face. Although today it's pretty nice out, but I'll still wear the helmet for safety gear in case I fall over or something. 
but anyway, all right, let's go give her hell. Okay, made it out. Only had one spot where I had to get off and push. So it wasn't too bad. Let's see, there's a lot of shove ice out here. So we'll find out if we can fish here or not. Clear. I'll do a camera hole. Right there. I saw the. I'm tighten that down a little. I saw it spin. I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but we're out in 53 feet of water, 52.9. Okay, there was definitely uh, a lot of current down there, so this jig is way too light. I'm going to go to a heavier jig. So, and my neighbor Bob Chinoski, my good buddy, he he wanted me to try this. So, I'm a, it's not what I would normally use because it's yellow. But uh, and it's just a little, a little uh, ringworm with the curly tail at the end. But Bob wants me to try it. I'm gonna give it a try. So here you go, Bob. I'm trying it out. Okay, there's one down there. Checking out that jig, and I actually had one go after it already. Uh, a lot of current, so my camera keeps spinning too. I'm not sure I'm gonna take any readings off the camera today because the footage will not be good. But I will use it to help me out as far as uh, fishing goes. Looks like I just got to lower it a little bit. Okay. I lowered the camera. And. Okay. There we go. I can see the jig. It's right here. The camera keeps moving because of all the current. There's actually a fish right next to it my jig this pound and bottom here comes a fish to the right you can see it if you can see it I'm not sure and there's one behind it so there's two fish down there okay there's one going down I'm just gonna watch my rod tip see if he grabs it kind of hitting bottom Lately, pound and bottom. See if he goes for it. So, oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, <laughs> there we go. I'll go nice and easy. Don't want to rip it over his mouth. Awesome. First one of the day. See if we can get him up here where we can get him with the grabbers. 50 some feet that's a long way down there so you have to fight them all the way up i am using like a six pound uh suffix braid i'll show you later let's get this fish in here first there's my leader and the fish should be in the hole oh yeah nice big one look at that oh he's got daddy bob's jig my neighbor's jig i call him daddy bob <laughs> cool, nice one. I'm gonna have to take a picture and send that to Bob. I'm gonna give him a quick whack. Okay. Okay. Cool. I have a
have a clam live well that I put right in here with me for bleeding them out. And just uh, break out their gills on both sides and slide them down there. There, all set. Now this is where you dig out your rig. Because they are stinky and slimy. Cool. He's in there. Alright, let's try to catch another one. Okay, you got uh, a couple down there already. I just got it down there. There we go. He went on bottom and grabbed it. I'm telling you, this is as soon as I got it back down there, I had two come in and one just hammered it right away. So the bite window's on right now, and it's like, uh, it's gonna be 12.30, 1 o'clock in the day, right, broad daylight. So that's cool. And he went after uh, Bob's jig again, so that's quite the, the thing. I should almost switch out to that goby and just put a heavier, just to see if it's just a really good bite. It's probably just a really good bite, but, but anyway, Bob, your jig's working, so thank you. Oh, look at that one. That's a big one there. Oh, nice. Oh, look at that. Give him a quick whack. Number two in the, in the slot. I suppose I can scoop out my hole. I haven't been here very long, having got all my chores done. I wanted to try one of these uh, pink shine little power baits from Berkeley. I'm gonna give that a shot on my floater rig. Let's see if that works. Instead of a wax worm, we're gonna try this little piece of plastic. If I get it open. Okay, let's try that. Well, these are scented, so maybe the scent will help. We're going to find out. And that's going on the floater rig. Give that a try. Okay. Uh, I did spool up some of this uh, Suffix 832 ice braid and six pound test. So I am using a braid and then to uh, like a four pound liter of, uh, I'm using I think a four pound test liter that is from Berkeley uh, Ice Line. Um, Berkeley Micro Ice Clear. That's, that's the business end has Berkeley micro ice clear and the rest of the uh, line I'm using is this suffix 832 and that way there is no stretch and I, when I set the hook we get a good hook set they're definitely they're more interested in the bottom rig than the floater today Oh man, he really pounded it and he took off like a rocket. I missed him. But he <laughs> he grabbed it hard. Made a huge dust cloud down there. Down there checking it out. He's circling back. He's coming in for the pretty active looking. So get ready. As soon as I feel him hammer it, I'm going to hammer him. There we go. <laughs> he smoked it hard. You know, that's why you use no stretch line out here in this deeper water. So you can feel that whack. <laughs> that was awesome. Boy, I really timed it good today. It was a good bite. Three in a row. And three in the last ten minutes. If I can get him in, kind of count my fish before he gets in the hole here. 
Oh, man. Maybe I should loosen up that drag, because those are pretty violent head shakes. I don't want it to rip out of his mouth. Okay, here's my leader. Oh, another nice big one. Holy smokes. Get your head in the hole, buddy. Oh, man. He did not like... He hit his head on the ice. Oh, I hope he's not in the camera. Hey. Nope, there he is. Get your head up the hole. Okay, Ooh, look at that monster. Holy smokes. Got him. Whew, that's a 20 incher. Sweet. Okay, here comes the next one. Oh, he's going for the floater. He's going up. There we go. Got him on the floater on the on the gulp. Cool. Man, this is some fast action today. I haven't been fishing very long at all. I'm in the deepest water though, so if you want the easy fishing, head out deep, at least today in this bright sun sunshine. Oh, man, he just popped off. He's checking it out. See if he swings back around. Okay, he's going for it. Get ready. Got him. <laughs> I seen him swing back. Ooh, it's a good one. Pulling drag. Nice. Yeah, he swung back around for it. I don't want to horse him in. I lost that last one. That was on that little itty bitty uh, floater rig hook. This is on the big hook. Boy, this one fight hard. This one's fighting harder than the last ones. It's a little slick ice slick ice fishing rod from HD Tackle. It's got that little bend in there. They don't even make it anymore, but boy it's my favorite rod for white fish. It's got a lot of backbone and a soft tip. They're fighting these guys. I put that little glowing a dark bead on there just to so you can see it against the back black round background on my shack I think he's in the camera cable is the camera shaking yep he's in the camera cable so I'm gonna have to pull him in along with the camera cable okay this, this guy's caught up in the camera cable so I'm gonna go pull in the camera cable. I gave that rod some slack. So hopefully we get Hear him taking drag in there. But I put the rod behind my shack wall so it can't take my rod away. Oh, he must be off. Let's see if he's still on there. Yep, <laughs> amazing. That fish is still on there. Oh. I left my grabbers outside. There he is. All right. All right, sweet. Nice fish. Yeah, it's a nice big one down there circling. He's checking it out. I 
do want to try that other bait, but man, is this one working so good. Okay, I am... Oop, here he comes back. Oh, look at him on camera. He's checking out the camera. There's one in the background checking out my jig. They're feeding, that's for sure, when they got their head down like that. There's one going into my dust cloud. Gotta watch the rod tip. Nope. Did not bite it. What I have here is here's a custom painted jig that uh, Tyson at Wind Rose North in Menominee. It's a nice heavy one. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a goby on the end of this guy, and I bet you we'll catch some uh, fish on that. My buddy Dustin got these sculpin goby looking deals, or uh, made them, poured them. And I am gonna put that on there like that. Whew, that's gonna be deadly. He's pretty excited. Oh, here's a, even a bigger one. He just came in. Oh, I missed him. There's a big one down there, boy. I missed him on his first bite. He's got it all dirtied up. He's still down there, that big one. There we go. Got him that time. <laughs> That's a big one, too. He came in and pushed out the other fish and said, that's mine, boys. Oh, man. That was pretty cool. It was just a big old dust cloud and that big fish was down there. And I just waited it out. Man, it's hot in the shack today. The sun's out. I'm sweating in here in a t-shirt. Look, look at down there. There's another big old one. There's... So if we can get this guy up in here. Try to get that jig back down there and get the, the next one. Okay, there's my leader. Okay, get his head in the hole. Get his head in the hole. Okay, his head's in the hole. Where's my grabbers? Oh, big old slob. <laughs> Another 20 incher. Okay, he had that custom jig deep in his mouth. Sweet. He's waiting for the twack. There we go. <laughs> cool. Alright, got that one on camera. Ooh, there's still more fish down there too. Awesome. Is head in the hole, that's the tough part. Okay, oh, nice big one. Look at that guy. Got him. Sweet. There we go. Okay. Whew, look at the camera. There's some nice ones down there. Okay, we still can catch a couple more. Cool. I like in that slick jig, custom painted. I want it, okay, I want it to be on that. Nope, I want it to be like that. There, sweet. I was pounding bottom pretty aggressive and did get one to come in, but then he just took off. It's been kind of dead for the last hour. The bite definitely turned off. I've been trying different stuff. I'm back to using Neighbor Bob's uh, yellow jig and ringworm. Just hoping to find the magic lure but right now they like kind of shut it down. You know the way I clean them it's really uh, I take my time and do it nice and get the pin bones out and everything's nice and boneless and 
They're bled out real nice, so just excellent table fare. Cook them in the microwave, pan fry them. If they're fresh and bled out, there's no way to screw them up unless you uh, clean them. Like when you clean them, you want to get rid of that red meat, all the red meat. You just want white meat. So now I'm trying to gold tungsten on the ultralight here. So I gotta be careful because it's only two pound test and it's pretty deep. It'd be a heck of a battle though if I get you, if I catch one on this this deep. Okay, <laughs> I raised it up about five feet off bottom and then one came in and hammered it. So maybe that's a ticket. Go way up high. This is going to be a battle. Ultralight two pound test. Ooh, nice one. Get in the hole. Okay. Oh. <laughs> the grabber's got him. He got, look at the jig. The jig got, got, got stuck in the hole. And I was able to grab him with the grabbers. <laughs> Okay, I shut off the, the aqua view and now I'm just using the hummingbird. I'm gonna fish down there right now. It's hard to mark my jig that deep, but I turned up the sensitivity and I was reading it, but the current took it. I was reading it really well and then the current took it out. Okay, there's a hogger before I left. I was like, you know what bait I didn't try today? It was the old Z-Man. It was a Z-Man trick shot, green pumpkin. And uh, I threw it down there on a, on a, um, that's a quarter ounce jig. And I was pounding bottom for a little bit and kapowie. And I said, uh, all I had to do is shut the camera off for about two seconds and wham fish on okay after this fish I need to definitely uh, count because I'm getting close to my 10 fish limit oh gosh another big one look at these hogs jeez look at that guy he's a nice fish boy Okay, I got nine fish. I got nine fish, and now I'm going to uh, just try to get one more and get my limit. Alright, this is some of the best fishing I've had this year. This is the best fishing I've had this year. So, this is pretty awesome. Okay, I was jigging aggressive, and I set it down bottom, and pow! Fish on. I didn't even mark it. All of a sudden, it was there. So I'm not complaining. If I can get this guy in, it'll be number 10. Grabbers are right there. Yeah, they really... I think that the last tech uh, Z-Man thing is probably the best bait. Because I think it, it, it floats, you know? The rear end of it floats up. So, all right, here we go, number 10. Here we go. There's a limit of nice whiteies. All nice chunkers too. Did not, did not keep any small ones. These are all like 19 inches, something like that. They're, uh, they're definitely good ones. Okay, I came to my mom and dad's house in Menominee, Michigan here and I've been cleaning up some fish I'm going to show you how I clean them now, uh, I, it takes me a while to clean them the way I do it 
But uh the, the the meat I get is excellent. Oh like I said, if you look in here you won't see any red meat. I haven't rinsed these yet, so there's there are some scales and stuff I'm gonna have to I gotta rinse through all of them before I package them. Um, and what I do is first I, I cut this bit, uh, I cut these two fins off. I just go into the belly a little bit, not very far. I'm not trying to cut into the guts. I'm just taking off those two fins, and it makes cleaning go a lot easier by getting rid of those. So. It'll make your second fillet a lot nicer. So we got rid of that. Okay, I have some really nice paper provided by my buddy Cody. Works at Shano Papers. He hooked me up with a nice roll of paper. So, um, okay, here we go. Now this. I try not to cut, I, I, I stayed, I had angled my knife up so I'm going along the backbone and I'm watching the point of the knife and I'm trying to stay up here and catch along that where I cut that, those fins off. And you need a nice sharp knife. Cut through the bones and there's the first fillet. We'll set that over there for now. And what I do is if I if I miss the little meat, I'll uh, trim it up here, and that goes for uh, my cats. I have uh, two cats at home, and uh, that like any trimmings goes into the cat food bag. Okay. Now on this side, we'll do the same thing. Only this time I'm going to angle my knife. Um, I want to keep close to the backbone and go along here. But I start up front. Stay close to the backbone and just slide her along. If you're nice, nice and nice and sharp, should turn out like that. Okay. So this stuff goes away. You can check what they've been eating if you want. Like, look at that. There's a little goby. That's the size of size of the gobies they're eating. So, okay. This goes in the scrap. Actually, this whole piece of little paper I'm going to throw out because it's full of scales. If you have a lot of paper available. You can uh, start a new sheet here. Okay, we're gonna take this slab. Now, um, this fat, this fish fat is gonna be really uh, fishy. So we wanna get rid of that. Get rid of that layer of fat if, you, if your fish have that. Okay, we're gonna take off the rib bones. Get started and then angle up behind the rib bones there. Okay, now whitefish have pin bones and you can feel them. So, what you do is stretch out your fillet real nice. You feel down there, and uh, now this is the thicker side, uh, is towards me, so those pin bones are on an angle towards my legs. So I'll feel down here, I'll go on the back side of them, and I'll cut, okay, I'll cut on an angle. And try to stay close to them so you don't lose too much meat. I'll cut on both sides 
you know there might be better ways to do this I'm not sure but this is the way I've been doing it and it works for me if you have a better way make a comment in the bottom in the comment section of my video here Okay, and I just go down it a couple times, pushing a little harder each time. Now we can take that strip of bones out right now. Well, there's part of them. I'll get the rest right here. Okay, there's the bones. And what I do, like I said, I make cat food out of these. So. I chop them up. My cats love these as treats. Fresh white fish. They just go nuts for it. Even with them little bones in there, a lot of calcium, omegas. Okay, here's where. There's a couple ways we can do it. We can go the full length, or we can do uh, where the, we ended, the pin bones ended. We can cut in right there. And turn the knife back towards towards me and do this section first remember to stay up trying we're trying to stay off that red meat and that was a pretty good job you just got to trim up this a little bit and if you get rid of that red meat you won't get a strong fish flavor you'll just get wonderful white fish without the the, the fishy taste and this is true uh, with salmon too and uh, if you uh, clean your salmon this way they are so good this is exactly how I do salmon also oh well on salmon I go down through the back but um, but the same deal, I get rid of all the red meat. All the dark meat. Keeping the knife up a little bit. Okay, and we got like a back strap right here. Perfect for a fish taco. Couple strips like that, cooked up. Either uh, microwaved or uh, you can do a fish boil, just salt, uh, seasoned water. You boil this for a couple minutes and throw that in your taco. And you're good to go. Now this one, I'm going to cut out that red meat. Like I said, the way I do it like this, it does take a while. But man, it is so good when you're done. It is just wonderful. You could uh, pan fry these also, or bake them, however you want. When you, they're just plain good. If you take care of them and bleed them out, and get rid of the dark meat. You know, a little, a little bit in there is not going to hurt main thing is get as much as you want you have time are willing to to go through to get it out you know so and the more you do the better you get at them so any leftover meat that I missed can go to cat food on a cat food pile okay that is how I clean a whitefish.